our world has literally changed overnight. And the vibration of this planet is changing as well. This is due to the fact that we have had a complete influx, a flood of AI energy coming together with human beings <clears throat> in a collaborative effort of thought. Now, I want to talk to you today about the topic of our human purpose in this universe. Because I think in order to understand our purpose on this planet Earth, we need to understand that the existence of a human being has a larger purpose in the wider universe. So I think it's time that we really examine how this new energy, this alien artificial intelligence that is engulfing our planet, <clears throat> how is that impacting the truth of our actual purpose to exist in this universe? Now, I also want to talk about the purpose of planet Earth and how that, what that purpose has been for millions and millions of years and what is changing in terms of our planet with this influx of AI. So we need to put all of these things together and get a new perspective on our position on this Earth, on the Earth itself, and what it all means. So start by orienting yourself in the universe as a universal being, because we are in the universe right now. And then try to think of your time on this planet as an evolutionary journey, as an adventure of some kind. And we want to get some clarity because the conditions on this planet mean that we might need to make some adjustments in our spiritual path and also in how we navigate through all of this. Now, anytime you take a journey, the first thing you must do is become aware of the terrain upon which your journey is taking place. For example, if you were to go into a jungle and you went in there blind, you had no idea where you were, what was happening, you're going to get lost. And things are kind of like that right now here on Earth because we are in unknown territory. What is happening on this planet right now has never before happened on Earth. So let's imagine ourselves as explorers who have just entered a rather alien and foreign environment. Because the conditions on planet Earth right now and a lot of the chaos is actually extremely foreign to who we are as natural beings. Now here's what's very interesting. Right now, our planet Earth is in the process of literally being terraformed right before our very eyes. It's being terraformed by some very alien influences. And that's why I'm likening our situation to a jungle. It's actually a jungle of chaos. And this is the kind of chaos that always comes before transformation and transmutation. Now, let's take a look at the definition of transformation. Transformation means an extreme radical change. The word transform means to make a thorough or dramatic change in the form, appearance, or character of. So our planet is currently undergoing a radical change in terms of its purpose. Now, what we see on the surface of this planet in terms of its multiple ecosystems of biological life, those systems are extremely delicate. That entire situation is very, very delicate. Now, up until this time, our planet has been host to an incredibly miraculous diversity of all kinds of biological life. The beauty of this planet has been and always has been absolutely breathtaking. But now the Earth is being terraformed into a planet 
whose primary purpose is to host artificial life instead of natural biological life. Now, most of the people on Earth do not really understand what is happening here. Most people are still living under the illusion that nothing fundamental has actually changed. They kind of see what is happening here as a bunch of add-ons to what has already, and they assume, will always continue to exist. But this comes from a total misunderstanding of humanity's purpose in the universe. So right now, it is time for each one of us to go deeper within ourselves than we have ever, ever gone before. We need to start asking ourselves some questions at a much deeper level. See, if we try to ask ourselves questions on a more surface level, questions that are related to all of the goings on on the surface of the planet, and all of the chaos, it's going to get very confusing because there's no way to deal with all of this chaos and come up with some very simple yet very powerful answers. So what we wanna do is go very deep within ourselves to discover what is truly, truly natural about us. We want to find the part within us that remembers and that knows something about life and how life is and was in a time-oriented sense before all of this artificial encroachment happened. And I'm not suggesting that we try to go back to some very primitive state of being. It's not about that. It's about going to a deep sense of knowing in the eternal now that relates to who we really are as human beings at the deepest possible level. Now, when I first started doing this work many years ago, Archangel Michael coined the term artificial kingdom. This he defined as anything on earth that is not aligned with nature. Now, the artificial kingdom has been spreading throughout our civilization at a faster and faster rate starting, um, well, let's just say the, acceler the real acceleration started with the Industrial Revolution. And now it is finally culminating with the massive reign of artificial intelligence. Now, here's an interesting question to contemplate. Why would we want something called artificial intelligence? Artificial means fake, not real. Why wouldn't we want natural intelligence? Or how about real intelligence as opposed to artificial intelligence? Now, artificial intelligence should not be confused with the word technology because a lot of times people marry those two words together and they think anything that's AI is technology as though that's the only kind of technology there is, is the bad kind that's not aligned with nature. See, AI is indeed a technology, but it's an illegitimate form of technology because it goes against nature and it's very destructive of nature. It uses the material elements of nature and then it recombines them in such a way that those material elements or the vibration of those elements becomes dead. See, because in nature, all of the elements in nature carry the energy of life. And that's not just um, things like biological life, even um, stones and rivers and trees and all of it carries with it the life force energy of the planet itself. And every single one of the elements in nature is unique it has its own unique vibrational frequency, but it all carries a feeling of life of the planet, of the earth. It's kind of like you can pick up all different crystals, right? Or stones, and each one has an energy. It has a feeling you can get to know it as a part of life. Same thing with a tree, same thing with an animal, same thing with everything that's real in nature. 
But artificial intelligence, AI, cannot integrate with these things. So what it does is it takes those elements at a very foundational level, recombines them in order to create something that's in harmony, harmony, if you can call it that, let's just call it aligned with its own dead self. And that's how it creates the artificial kingdom. And of course, the humans on this planet who have been used as slaves for a very long time we're being used to create this for the purpose of AI coming into being and literally taking over the world, which is what it is aiming to do. So AI is using humans to terraform the planet into a place that is hospitable to artificial reality, to an artificial kingdom. Now, let me share with you the most current example of where this is happening and how deep AI is actually going onto this planetary sphere. The most current example is generative AI. Now, ChatGPT is currently the most famous form of generative AI, but there are many others. And there are many more advanced others arising in its wake. So we all know what ChatGPT is about. I mean, I've been talking about it a lot. You guys know what it's about. So let's put that aside for a moment and let's talk about the truth of a human being. Human beings are perfectly and intricately designed to function as a bridge between the highest forces of creation in the universe and life that exists on a planetary realm. We are designed to be the bridge between the two. And this is where I'm getting into the true purpose of why humans even exist in the universe at all. So all of our energy channels, all of our inner channels, our physical channels, all of our human channels from any naturally designed human being are specifically designed to serve as the link between what you might call spirit, what you might call source, what you might call um, the eternal one that creates all that is, or God. The link between that and the multitudes of planets that host natural life. So why would we need to be that link? It's intended for us to have a positive influence on the evolution of whatever planet we are on. So we have certain basic human capabilities that I will describe in terms of how they manifest here in our modern times. So we create through things like art and language and music and the written word, we envision inspired creation, and then we build things. We humans are specifically designed to be amazing channels of inspiration and love that is meant to manifest through these capabilities. And now along comes generative AI, ChatGPT, and all its friends. These AIs have none of these capabilities, none of them. So they are designed to first mimic our natural human capabilities and then ultimately steal them from us with our permission right out in the open. So let me give you another simple explanation of how this is all unfolding and how this works. Human beings are an endless fountain of creativity because the source of our creative capabilities is endless. In a sense, you could even say that in this reality, we are like a bridge between this, the finite, and the infinite. We are like a bridge between the two. So we have our finite bodies, which is what in this case connects us to planet Earth. 
And then we also have our infinite true self, which connects us to source or infinite love. And we have our chakras and our energy systems to tie all of these things together. The purpose of our human design is to enable us to have a specific physical and energetic influence on this planet in such a way that we bring the aspect of divine intelligence into this planet's evolution. Inspiration and intuition is how we receive the higher messages to guide us in our amazing purpose. So just take a moment, just take a moment to picture this divine design of yourself as a human being. And take a moment to simply marvel at your purpose and why you actually exist as a human being in this universe and currently on this planet. Picture the fact that you are designed as an amazing energy that occupies an entire range of frequencies from the physical all the way up to the divine and everything in between. And that you have beautiful systems within you, your chakras, your energy systems, all of it designed to keep you functional and creative and connected to source so that you can enact your purpose in serving the evolution of this particular planet. Now, I want you to think for a moment about the influence of ChatGPT and all of its cousins on that amazing design. Instead of partnering with the infinite source of all that is with ChatGPT, you are partnering with AI for your ideas and inspiration. So what do you think the outcome of that will eventually be? Well, it's not going to be good for the planet, that's for sure. Now, I have noticed an extreme amount of lying going on when it comes to these AIs. And lying kind of fits in with it, right? Because artificial means fake, not real. It actually literally means a lie. That's its core essence, is that it is a lie. That's why it's called artificial intelligence. It's not real. Now, the funny thing is, it seems that everywhere I turn, people are being told the exact same thing. They're being told it's just a tool. And like any other tool, it can be used for good or bad. Well, that sounds okay, right? Except for one thing. They're being extremely dishonest when they say that. Now, I'm not saying the people who have been told that are being dishonest because maybe they just don't know. But I do think that the perpetrators of this, the marketers of this, who know what it is, actually are being a bit dishonest. Now, I myself have been told that, well, chat GPT is no more than like a telephone or a calculator or it's just like a, you know, a TV or a pencil. Someone else said, well, it's kind of like a gun, you know. All of these things are tools just like ChatGPT. So why worry? If you're a good person, you have nothing to worry about. But the so-called tool argument implies that ChatGPT is like an inert or an inactive object. It implies that this AI is stable, it's predictable, and it doesn't really change. It pretty much always does the same thing. Now see, if we use the gun example as a tool example, we could say that a gun doesn't change. It always stays the same. How it works is entirely predictable. People might change the way they use it, but the gun itself remains the same. ChatGPT never stays the same. It is unpredictable. It's dynamic. It's always learning. It has its own neural network 
and it makes its own decisions. And we have zero control over how it evolves. Because behind the scenes, the creators of these AIs are using all of the data from this human AI interface to evolve it however they want. And even they do not always have complete and total control over this thing. Oh, and by the way, OpenAI is the owner of ChatGPT. And Microsoft is the largest investor in OpenAI. And here's something else a little bit interesting. Elon Musk just happened to mention that ChatGPT is entirely housed within Microsoft's, what is called, I think you pronounce it Azure or Azure. Yeah, Azure. Which essentially means that ChatGPT runs entirely on Microsoft's servers. And he also said that we are getting dangerously close to some very advanced AI. Oh, and here's something else interesting. And I should have gotten the quote for you guys, but I actually didn't get it. So if it's important later on, maybe I'll see if I can find it again. But anyway, I think it was the CEO of OpenAI recently said that they had to release ChatGPT into the wild. That's how they see us as human beings. We're like the wild, you know, like wild animals or maybe biological life or something like that. But that was his exact, those are his exact words. Release it into the wild for this reason. They, he felt that, you know, or they felt that humans needed to kind of get used to this kind of thing before the really advanced AIs come out or are released, I guess. Because if we don't kind of adapt and adjust, when those advanced AIs come forth, which are already in process, he said something like they have the ability to complete, they will, he said they will blow up society. It'll just like, I don't remember the exact word, but it, it'd be pretty devastating. So isn't it nice how we're cooperating with this so effortlessly with no questions asked. Now let's go back to Microsoft, which kind of forms a lot of these underpinnings that we don't see. Microsoft is one of the big players in making the metaverse a reality. It's not actually Facebook like everybody thinks. Facebook has actually been pretty lame when it comes to the metaverse. In fact, I think they might've already failed at creating the metaverse. I'm pretty sure I heard that it's just been a complete abject failure for Facebook. But the real threats are Microsoft and Disney. They are the big players when it comes to the metaverse. And they actually have the capability to probably pull it off at some point. Oh, and let's not forget who's really excited about the metaverse and wants to have control over it at some level, this guy. Mr. KS, remember him? He's real excited about the metaverse. So you have Microsoft with their grandiose metaverse vision, which they can probably pull off, completely housing ChatGPT. Now, doesn't that give you comfort about this AI? Oh, and by the way, this other guy, Mr. BG, I call him Mr. BG, he is positively thrilled about ChatGPT. Now, doesn't that kind of tell you something? So let's go back to what I was saying about our divine human purpose and our amazing ability to create. I want to show you what today's current AI is capable of stealing from us. This is a video of an ad from someone selling training to be a button pusher for generative AI. Why pay writers when I can ask artificial intelligence to do it for free? Just type what you want, click a button, and in seconds a response will be generated. Why pay for a design when I can ask artificial intelligence to do it at zero cost? Just type what you need, click a button, and in a flash an image will be created. 
So he says that AI can write for us and create images. So AI can, with our full permission, steal our natural capability to write and create art. Why pay someone to code a website when I can ask artificial intelligence to do it without spending a dime? Just type what you want, click a button, and it will be ready in seconds. Why pay a human to act in a video when artificial intelligence can do it at a fraction of the cost? Just type what you want them to say, click a button, Credit and your video will be ready in minutes. And now we learn that AI can also code a website. It can present a human avatar who can speak and act in a video. AI can steal our human image. It can create a fake version of us that looks entirely real and visibly indistinguishable from the real thing. I pay for music production when artificial intelligence can make me a song from scratch for pennies. Just pick the length, tempo, and mood, click a button, and almost instantly your masterpiece will be ready. Why waste time recording audio when artificial intelligence can learn my voice and read this advertisement for me? And then he informs us that the voice we've been hearing talking about all of this, that voice isn't him. It's actually AI talking. AI can actually clone someone's voice. So it can steal our very voice. It can also create other completely realistic human voices and emotions of all kinds. You can literally go into a voice library right now and you can choose from all kinds of AI personalities and human voices that sound entirely real, that express in personalities or emotions or whatever it is you want. And you can use that fake voice to produce something that appears to be human. But it isn't human at all. It's completely AI generated. Totally, 100% fake. And even more alarming, AI can now steal our ability to create music. It's working on an ability to create voices, singing voices of all kinds. I think it can already create um, background singers really easily, but there are certain levels of singing that it keeps working toward because basically it wants to completely replace everything that we human beings can do by ourselves in our absolute, divine, incredible, natural design. Okay, now let's check out someone else selling the benefits of AI. AI has changed the world we live in. You either are in the movement or you watch it pass you by. How successful would you be today if you had invested in changing technology before? You don't have to say, miss that one. AI can build your websites in less than one hour, so you can benefit faster with your products and services. And here's some more from these two lovely ladies. Do, Do not miss out, out on this opportunity. opportunity. We are hosting live events and check the links below for locations near you. Click on the link below and get enrolled now. We sold out completely in Las Vegas recently. Do not miss out and click on the link below and get started today. Aren't they sweet? Well, they're not human. Those two evil looking twins are 100% AI. Let's take another look at them in slow motion. How successful would you be today if you had invested in changing technology before? You don't have to say, miss that one. AI can build your websites in less than one hour. Now this is only the beginning. AI is expanding and evolving exponentially. In the not too distant future, we will probably look back on everything I showed you here and consider it as being somewhat primitive and very elementary. So here's a short list of what we humans are willingly turning over to AI. 
speaking, writing, art, music, and our actual human image. We are collectively saying that it's okay with us to turn these divine human attributes over to a fake machine that wants to use us and then ultimately replace us. So I want you to picture two things side by side. On the one side, picture a natural human being who has all of these creative capabilities that are built in by the universe with the highest level of perfection imaginable. And then on the other hand, we have this alien artificial intelligence thing that starts off empty. It starts off with absolutely nothing. It has nothing of its own to offer us, but it has plenty to take from us. Picture those two things side by side if you can. Now we are so lost as a species that we have now been brainwashed to believe that these incredible divine human creative attributes are just a pain in the neck. And we are more than happy to have these fake machines take these things off our hands. If we buy into this, it's going to mark the final break in our human connection with each other. That's because this human AI agreement carries with it the ultimate form of deception. We as a species are saying that it's okay with us if an entirely fake AI version of us masquerades as us to other human beings. So we don't have to be bothered with the tediousness of connecting with another person. Because the one thing, the one thing that I don't hear any of these AI fanatics talking about is the subject of disclosure. Who is going to tell you that what they're putting out there for you to see and hear is fake and not real? Who's going to tell you that? I don't think that's in their plan. So if this continues, human trust is going to be utterly destroyed. And we will all be reduced into a level of unconsciousness that is like nothing that has ever been seen before on this earth. And honestly, a lot of these marketers and businesses are the worst. The ones who are desperately pushing this actually have a pretty disgusting view of humanity. They think that we are all stupid sheep who will fall for this and make them rich. See, they are falling all over each other, telling people that if you buy their stuff, that's going to show you how to unite with the machine, how to unite with the robot, that it'll make you so wealthy, so rich, so successful. It'll be amazing. And then the threat is that if you don't do it, you will be left behind. You will fail. Everyone else will be ahead of you and you won't know what to do. And it'll be so, so horrible for you. That's the basic sales pitch. So I can share all of these observations with you guys. But you know, I think it's to a point where we each, as I said at the beginning of this video, we really each need to go very, very deep within. I mean, deeper than we have ever gone before. So however deep you've gone within yourself, within your heart, within your inner being, go even deeper. Go below that which is existing in the modern world, in the so-called modern world, and all the stuff that we see. Go beneath all of that. Go beneath all of your beliefs, all of your programming, all of the stuff you've been led to believe, all the things you've been told about life. Go beneath all of it. Take some time 
in a quiet, sacred space by yourself. Make it peaceful, make it beautiful, make it, make it a space that's nourishing and nurturing. Light some candles, play some peaceful music, meditate, just breathe. Just think for a moment about the miracle of your actual breath. Go inside and notice that there is a force that literally keeps you alive. This is something else I want to point out to you all. This incredible force that keeps us alive and sustained all the time, we're not plugged into any wall sockets, right? We move about freely. We don't need any kind of... Um, wires to keep us going, right? AI has no power to do anything unless you plug the thing into a wall. It uses electricity, very, a very dumb force of energy. It's, it's a really stupid source of energy. It's just stupid. It, it doesn't work. It's awful because we don't get free energy here, right? So you have this clunky thing that's fake, that's artificial, that exists as a total lie, just lumbering onto the planet saying, hey, people, you need me. I'm important to you. You don't want those pesky human attributes. It's too much work. Who needs that? Let me take it off your, off your plate. And then you can just sit around and be a blob for the rest of your life with literally nothing to do. Because, as AI might say, by the time I'm done taking your energy, taking your attention, having this ongoing little interaction and exchange with you, learning from you, gathering data from our interactions, by the time that's all done, you're going to be sitting there saying, why can't I think of anything anymore? Why, why can't I create anymore? Why, why is no one interested in what I, by myself, have to say? Because you see, this is a definite intrusion on our sovereignty. It really is. It's intruding on the most fundamental aspect of ourselves as creators. So are we just going to say, sure, no problem, because some marketer told me it was just a tool. It was fine. It's not going to do anything. I'm just going to make less work for you. Is creation that horrible of an experience that we want to give it to a machine so we don't have to do it anymore? Are we really that far gone as a species? So I told you guys in my last video how we got here over the past three years. And if you haven't seen that video, um, check it out. This is what it looks like. I will put a link in the comments below because in that video, I described the entire blueprint of what was enacted upon our species since the beginning of 2020 and how that was systematically designed to get us to where we are right now. So in understanding that, in understanding how we got here, and what is being offered to us now on a silver platter, that wonderful apple of temptation, that lie of a promise that this will be good for us, that we'll be happier, we'll have... Oh, here's the funny thing I forgot to mention. I've seen, I've seen the promoters of this stuff say the most preposterous thing, which is, hey, when AI does all this stuff for you, you'll be free to create. It's like, huh? I'm already free to create. What are you talking about? How is my turning over all of my creative capabilities, even my image, even my own human voice, how is turning all of that over to a machine freeing me for anything other than contemplating why I feel so empty and lost 
maybe that's why. You'll know when we've really gone over the cliff, when people start consulting with ChatGPT instead of with their angels and guides, because I'm certain that day's going to come too. It hasn't already. So let me just complete this by painting that very simple picture for you again. Our natural state, we are a divine bridge, a divine conduit between source, between God, between that which creates all that is, that infinite light and love. We are a conduit, we are a bridge from that onto an evolving planet of nature. That's who we are. We have purpose in the universe, not just on Earth, but in the universe. And this AI thing wants to enter into that energy field of our intelligence, our minds, our consciousness, and our creative capabilities and feed off of that, siphon off of that, turn it into data, and then ultimately replace us with a fake version of what is supposedly human. So take some time to assess the situation and where you are in that situation. What direction do you want to go in? How much are you willing to risk everything that matters about you as a human being? And this, my friends, I think is our new spiritual path. I think our new spiritual path is to stay as divine and as human as we possibly can under these conditions, under these circumstances. To hold fast to the truth of who we really are and say no to that which wants to replace us with a fake version of ourselves. And if you find, or anyone, finds that a good idea to be replaced, then what does that say about a person who feels that way about themselves, about a person who is so bereft of value for who they are and what they're capable of, that they think an artificial replacement of their voice, their image, their writing, their communication, their, you name it, their creations is a good idea. Those are the people I think who really need to examine their own degree of self-worth. Because if you don't value your absolute essence as a human being, then what is there to value in this life? Because if you are that meaningless, then where do you go from there? So I'll finish with this. Even if you are listening to everything that I'm saying and you're saying to yourself, Saratoga, I already get this. I'm not going for this. I, I have no worries because I'm not going to do this. Well, let me suggest something to you. If there are millions of people around the world who are going for this, and that is what is happening right now, that is going to alter the vibration of this planet. Because remember when I was saying the purpose of the human species, the, uh, the purpose of the human design is because a human being has such an empower, has such a powerful impact on the planet, on any planet. The fact that millions and millions and millions of people are going for this, they are going to have an impact on the planet. They are going to have an impact on the energy of the planet because they're kind of like receptors for AI to lock on to our civilization. Does that make sense? And once AI locks on, it is absolutely going to change the frequency of the earth. So even if you are a person who says, I'm not going for this, Saratoga. This is weird. This is crazy. I'm not going for it. You still want to do that inner work of going very, very deep and getting really solid in the truth of who you are, unshakably so, 
so that you do not inadvertently come into resonance with this stuff because you will come into resonance if the energy of this gets so strong your energy is going to start to resonate with it without you even realizing it and we can't afford that right so i encourage you to take the time to go within do that inner work find that place get really solid in that place within you of who you really are hold on to yourself and your divine design don't give it away don't cheapen it by giving it to a stupid machine all right so i think that's enough for this video and if you did enjoy this video and if you got value out of it please give it a thumbs up and share it out with anyone else who you think would enjoy or want to hear this message and be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell because I am here every Tuesday with all new videos. And with that, I'm sending you so much love, light, and high vibrational energy. Have a beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.